I'm currently standing on the stage of the concert hall in Brisbane and this is going to be where I return to in four months time at the end of my tour, uh, having gone right round Australia and uh, doing all the different gigs, about 80 odd gigs and uh, I'm going to get to those gigs on that. It all starts here. Coming skips. I start in Brisbane, I go across the Broken Hill, I come down, clipping the top end of Victoria, I go through New South Wales, I end up in Newcastle, I go from Newcastle down to Canberra, then I double back on myself to Sydney, then from Sydney I go right the way across to Adelaide, I come down the coast, hit Melbourne, then I'll go right round regional Victoria, then up to Port Perry, right across the Nullarbor, the longest bit of straight road in the world, then through Kalgoorlie, I go around the bottom end of WA, straight past Perth, end up in Geraldton, back down to Perth, then from Perth, straight back up Darwin, Mount Isa, and then down the Queensland coast, ending up back in Brisbane. <gasps> I'll be going everywhere from the big cities to the tiny outback towns and meeting loads of great people along the way. Well, I say that, we don't know. I'll be meeting loads of people, we'll have to see how great they are. No pressure on them. <laughs> this fella walked up to me, right, and he had a big old beard on him, and he just goes, excuse me, Ross, I just have to tell you that the Lord Jesus... He is looking after you as you are riding on your motorbike. Oh. And I went, do I get a discount on the insurance then? Throwing research and relevance out the window, allow me to be your ill-informed tour guide to this amazing country. Hang on, motorbikes don't have windows, that doesn't work. There's only one way to describe Australia, massive. The United Kingdom fits into it 31 times, and if you took the coastline and stretched it out, it would go all the way around the world. If you were to take the entire population of China and place them in Australia, that would be a logistical nightmare. I mean, who's gonna do the catering? Riding a motorbike's the best way to see any country but it's not exactly the most practical when it comes to doing a big stand-up tour. And you know it's me coming down the highway because you'll see me with a set on the back like this. It's quite good for you lot down the front, isn't it? I look like a horny ant. some sugar! There's nothing like the freedom of the open road, and there's nothing like a massive road train coming the other way, spraying you with shit. What's mad about being out here, like, like miles away from anywhere, is the fact that it's completely silent, and it's just... Nothing breaks the uh, silence until one of these giant trucks comes rumbling past. Like it goes from silence and then just listen. Two big things of what look like portable toilets on the back of his truck. And then once he's gone, silence again. Of course, it's not only vehicles on the Australian roads. Oh, that was really scary. 
scary that. That nearly ended the whole thing. I was coming down there and uh, just bombing along. And uh, next thing I see out the corner of my eye, just a, a, an emu, and he was running for the side of the bike, and I didn't know whether to speed up or whether, or whether to back off and let him go in front. And I'm and, the, and he was just running like this. Bloody emus! Who thought they were a good idea as a concept? I know. Let's have a bird that's essentially a bush with a face. What could possibly go wrong there? So I'm bombing down the road like that. And then the next thing I know, one of the bushes just does this. They don't even come in a straight line. They come at you diagonally like that. Like an anorexic Michael Flatley. <laughs> Six foot feather dusters with suicide on their minds. <laughs> you know, like when you're in a corridor and you go to go past somebody and they go the same way, and then you go back the other way and you go. <laughs> Emus are genetically programmed to do that. And you're supposed to slow down. I don't. No. I say an emu coming the other way, I speed up. Because I know that if you hit them just right, you can spin them and they clean your bike. Yeah. <laughs> I nearly died. An emu nearly killed me for me to talk to you people. There's lots of flies around. They're more of an annoyance than an actual threat to life. Of course, this journey isn't all going to be kangaroos and deserts, oh no. I think you'll find that uh, if there isn't something at the side of the road that nature's created, man is more than capable of filling in the gaps. I went to the big prawn earlier on. <laughs> You've got some brilliant shit at the side of your road, haven't you? There was some dickhead, right? Next to the big prawn, hitchhiking. Surely anyone driving along, right, isn't gonna be looking at him, are they? They're gonna be going, wow, that's the biggest prawn I've ever seen in my life. My first stop on this journey is the relentless tourist trap that is Surfer's Paradise. But it's just, it's constant, isn't it? It's just more things to the bowling place that's got, have you seen? The bowling alley has got giant screens above where you're trying to bowl with rock music playing. You don't want that, you're trying to bowl and there's bloody Bon Jovi on the thing. Yeah! And you're going, no, come on, John, I'm trying to bowl now. You can't, you can't knock ten pins down when he's got bloody Bon Jovi there in his incredibly tight trousers trying to put you off. You can't work out why the balls always go to the left. <laughs> I can't understand it. For some reason, it's John in his crazy pants. So this is Surface Paradise, and I've just finished my gig at the Gold Coast Arts Centre. And I've rather foolishly come down here to show you what it's like. Um, it's the... Uh, it's the Ibiza of Australia. <laughs> and the audiences are just really lively because they've all been drinking and they're a little bit out of control. And that, that's all right. And people like to point at you and shout. Ah, bon bon. Do, 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 have you bought a bong yet? I just bought it, yeah. <laughs> what a great... If George Lucas really... Look, it's a Jar Jar Binks bong. Look at that. And this is another character uh, George yeah, Lucas created. Can't be in the camera? Of course you can. This is Brian Binks, Jar Jar Binks' brother. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. He's not going to get drunk. Oh, 
This was a really bad idea. I've just stopped for a little five minutes uh, at this place, uh, the Macadamia Castle. Very authentic. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, Norman castles used to be made of breeze blocks, and then on the outside they would show depictions of medieval times, like the, the dragon, the, uh, the cockatoo and the kangaroo, uh, and, then, uh, and then, of course, mini golf and barbecue, two of the things which uh, if you look back in history, many kings and queens, after a big uh, after a big battle, would enjoy miniature golf. You know, and, and why not? It's like somebody who set up a tourist attraction and has just gone. I want everything. I want a zoo. I want mini golf. I want animals. I want a castle, and I, I want it all to come under the world of nuts. You know. I'm going to build a macadamia nut siege tower try and take the whole thing over. It's a good way of getting free macadamia nuts, is to storm the castle and then they tip them on you. You just take them. I felt like turning up dressed as a Brazil nut in armour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to take the macadamia castle. Maybe surrounded by a couple of children dressed as cashews. They wouldn't like that, would they? Because it's not the most heavily fortified castle either, <laughs> I've noticed. Oh, I have to be careful. I think that was the Macadamia King. So I've just arrived in Lismore and uh, the gig's in about uh, an hour's time and it appears that the entire town's shut. Nothing. Outside, right, and the one car that I saw on the street, right, was just these l young lads, right, for the sake of argument, we'll call them bogans. Um, <laughs> just, no, I'm just, I'm just saying that I might be wrong, but I think there might be some sort of shit car rally. <laughs> just some sort of event laid on by the Lismore City Council, you know, where crappy Toyotas are driven badly around roundabout. <laughs> And this kid was like, I'm on my motorbike, right? And I pull up at the roundabout, and this crappy Toyota goes round the roundabout, and this kid leans out, and he gives it the whistle. <laughs> you live in Lismore, you dickhead! <laughs> you whistle! Yeah, with a big up the Lismore massive. Dickhead, you can't... I mean, for God's sake... I mean, trying to do a drive-by shooting in Lismore would be a nightmare, wouldn't it? <laughs> he's he's tri driving around trying to find someone to shoot with him. Uh, uh, try up there, try up there. There's no one up there. <laughs> shoot the windows of that shop. It's already boarded up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Rappers rapping about what's happening on the street. Nothing. <laughs> the, yo, the shops are shut, there's no one about. Oh, I heard a shout of a child. Oh, no, it was an old man falling. <laughs> I have to get to Broken Hill, and I've only got two days to do it in, so it'll mean I'll have to ride from morning till night, and there's no margin of error. Electrics have just failed on my bike. No. Fuck it. 
have to get that looked at. I think I've learned a very important lesson here. I'm going on a massive road trip around Australia. Probably best not. Probably get your bike done properly before you go, rather than pissing about with it yourself. I'd just like to point out at this stage that the electrics didn't actually fail on my bike. I forgot to tighten up the terminals on my new battery. Well done, Noble. So yeah, so it's sunset, you know, I'm really glad to be uh, um, halfway to Broken Hill. 957 k's and um, I'm gonna have a nice uh, bath and a lie down and I might even uh, I might even go to uh, this place here, Fun Chick. Juicy fried chicken. It's not something you greasy fried chicken, you know, hot fried chicken, spicy fried chicken, juicy. Juicy is something you associate with uh, melons, not fried chicken. Um, but you know, it's fun chick, and that's the great thing about it. It's, it's chicken, and it's fun. I really have to go now, um, and get some sleep, because I have to do it all again tomorrow. I'm 167 k's down the road from Burke, and I'm in a town called Cobar, and uh, it's hot. It's really, really hot. And uh, there's the uh, hot air, and the engine, and the, it's, like, uh, it's like sitting on a hairdryer. Good thing about wearing motorcycle gear in, in this sort of heat is it uh, gives you a really nice tan just around this area here, you know? Just that sort of, the rest of you is completely pale, but just a nice, you know, just for that sort of uh, George Hamilton meets Zorro, that's the look that, I, that I'm going for, you know? Too hard to even walk across to the bike there. Because when you're English and you're wearing full motorcycle gear, you sweat from places you didn't know you could sweat from. <laughs> like behind the eyes. <laughs> you know, and it all runs down into this area. It's bizarre, it's like I've got guttering fitted or something. I'm just sloshing around in my trousers like that. My my testicles are far wrinklier than they should be. They're just <laughs> floating. Mm. Mm. Take me kicks off. It's like a lava lamp in my pants. It's just... I've got hippies getting stoned and staring at them. <sighs> oh, that's, that's quite beautiful, that is. Look at that. If you were to put a torch behind my plums, right, it'd look like the start of a Bond film. It's like running down my back into my arse crack. It's coming around here. 
I'm just glad I haven't got like a Peter Andre style 1996 pack because it would fly off like that. That's probably actually a good thing. That's probably why he had it. It's probably from here. I was born in that bin. That's his bum. <laughs> What a, what a great reason to be beaten up at a deserted roadhouse. Uh, some bloke gets out of a car and said, have you just said my wife's Peter Andre's mum? to be honest. It's uh, got a church and uh, but it looks uh, it's a bit shot. be great as if I just went up there and there was a little chef. <laughs> So I've made it to Broken Hill, and uh, it's 10 past seven, as you can see by the clock. And also, uh, kind of feeling that uh, getting the train would have been a bit quicker. Yeah, sorry, my friend, what? Why on earth did you put all this? Why on earth did I put all this? Why on earth did I travel 2,000 miles to Broken Hill? Do you know what I mean? It's for fun, for you, to have a marvellous evening. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, I mean, I, I, I wish I'd known that it was going to piss you off. I wouldn't have even bothered, to be honest with you. The, uh, the, <laughs> no, I travelled over for... I was on the uh, Lismore, and then I, I came miles here, and it's always great to see a room full of people like, yeah, and then one person just like, why did he bother? <laughs> but, you know, but why would he put all this shit up? What's the point in that? He doesn't need to have that. You do know that this, uh, you've come to the right show, haven't you? You, you didn't think this was some sort of town meeting that we've called, like, because that would have been a nightmare if you just gone bloody hell, he's a bit of a flamboyant mare. You know? He's, uh, hey, over there, somebody going, woo -hoo! we've got a new mare, and he's got a ridiculous pile of silver balls. <laughs> It's 
first thing in the morning now. Uh, I've come to do a breakfast radio to let people know that the gig's on and uh, look at this. This is the, the building that the radio station's in. They've taken it very literally. They've done it like a big old fashioned radio. Now, first impressions of Broken Hill, what do you think? Well, I'm slightly uh, confused by uh, this building. Yes, um, it's a giant radio. It is. It's a bit yeah. strange, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's a bit sort of literal, the fact that you've got a radio station and somebody's thought, let's build it. I'm just, uh, I'm a bit worried about visiting uh, or driving past the uh, local gynaecologist. I just met in uh, a parts shop around the corner and uh, he's informed me that there's uh, something fun to come and look at here. So, something funny. Something, something funny. funny. But a bit sick as well at the same time. <laughs> Founding members of our local motorbike club passed away, so we built him up the hearse and dropped him off at the cemetery on it. Yeah, it was really good. Is it alright, if I? Uh, yeah, try for size. Yeah. It's not bolted on, but yeah, I'll hold it. I thought it might be, yeah. No. I don't know whether that's against the, the undertaking Mate, rules of lying on it. As long as you're not in the box, brother. Yeah, that's true. Right. I've made a mistake here. Instead of being on the BMW, I should have just got this and then got somebody else to ride it. Yeah. I'll yeah. ride it if you're going to lay on it. Got a tan while you're going yeah. along. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to? Well, just go slowly. Yeah. Around the block. Yeah. I want the helmet. Cool. Oh, it's the cemetery over there? Yeah, yeah. straight across. Oh, yeah, right around the cemetery. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. I'm now heading to Silverton, which due to its amazing visual look has been used in heaps of Australian films, most notably Mad Max 2. I don't know if it's the original, but I'll tell you what, the scene I really wanted to see is uh, him bombing down the motorway with a couple of utes behind, a box of bananas in the back. Mel, Mel, come back. I went to Broken Hill and, uh, and... <laughs> That's not the funny bit. <laughs> the dickhead went to Broken Hill. <laughs> No, I did. I went to Broken Hill. I was very excited because they've got the car from... Uh, they, that's where they did Mad Max 2. And they've got the car from Mad Max. And you can go there, and I know it's childish, but you can pretend to be Mel Gibson. <laughs> Brilliant. That basically involves staggering around the car. <laughs> pissed. <laughs> Just occasionally shouting anti-Semitic comments, you know. <laughs> I don't like 
Joe's. <laughs> the uh, oh, he might be a bigoted twat, but he's all a bigoted twat. <laughs> oh look, there's the Mad Max. Oh, brilliant! Look, Mad Max there. And then Razorback, which if you've never seen Razorback, turn this off immediately and go and see this film. Now then, Rob sent us here for, to, do the to do the test. It's quite easy. What you have to do is get the funnel, stick it in your pants, so it sticks like that. Right. You get the feelings the locals are taking like them in. Yeah. One hand on the butt, and you have to catch it three times. Right. And if you do that three times, you'll win a free beer and right. get a certificate. Right. So he's written on the door there. Would yeah. you like to pass the test? OK. So I have to put this in my trousers, yeah. and I have to put this on my where on my forehead. On your forehead, and you and have to get it, it in three times. If you get it three times, you win a free beer. Right. Why do I get the feeling that you're just going to pour something down this funnel? I'm going to do it. Right. So on your forehead. So on the forehead. Yeah, and then drop it. I'm allowed to hold it, am I? Oh, not really, but I'll let you. Oh, no, no, it's all right. And wait till I say go. Ready? Oh, you go. bastard. I knew it. I bloody knew it. <laughs> knew that was going to happen. <laughs> As you travel from state to state, you tend to encounter these fruit fly exclusion zones. Normally, I'd just get waved through. I'm not a man who looks like I eat a huge amount of fruit. The, yeah, I love that fruit fly exclusion zone. Oh, that's the main thing here, isn't it? It's the fruit. Am I right? Yes. Don't sound so enthusiastic. <laughs> yes. Oh, God, a fruit fly didn't get through the exclusion zone, did it? <laughs> come in in a little hat and sunglasses on it. Because that's what you've got on the side, isn't it? Some cheeky little fruit fly like that. Big cartoon version. Like, <laughs> I'll be sneaking in after dark. I was freaking out when I... Uh, I actually thought about doing a gig just on the edge of the fruit fly exclusion zone, just in case people started throwing rotten fruit at me. And I go, ah, 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 you can't do it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, I, I got a bit freaked out because I pulled up on my motorbike and there's just... and there was flies all on the front of it. And I went, oh, shit, what if they're not dead? <laughs> so I was at the side of the road performing tiny autopsies. <laughs> And all the flies, are they dead? Are they still dead? And then while I was doing that, and I'm looking at all the fly corpses, thinking, am I allowed to take them into the exclusion zone? You know, checking their tiny heartbeats. Loads of other flies were swarming around my head. And I was thinking, oh shit, are they just here to pay their respects? <laughs> to, you know, to their fallen brothers. That's probably my imagination going too far there. I'd like to give you some insight into um, uh, what I know about Mildura, but um, the answer is pretty much nothing. Because um, I arrived yesterday, drove straight into town, looked at my watch and went, oh, bollocks, I've got to go straight to the gig. So, um, yeah, so it was basically, I just got here, arrived, pretty much got my, uh, uh, got my uh, jacket off and went and uh, went straight on stage, you know, which um, sort of freaked me out a little bit because uh, I didn't get a chance to fully take everything in. Uh, quite a weird experience, you know, driving straight through the desert and then instantly, whoomph, it's all, you know, fairly lush, uh, orange-type growing area and... Um, and quite reminiscent of uh, 
the fifties as well. It, it freaks you out because I rode from uh, Broken Hill on the motorbike, so I arrived here and it's just he's just riding. It's all desert, and then you get here and it's like oh greenery and niceness and grass verges. And to be honest with you, I thought I'd travel back to the fifties just for a minute. <laughs> I just threw it in the town and went, Whoa! <laughs> Jesus, how fast was I going? <laughs> I appear to have gone back to 1955. <laughs> I was expecting Doc Brown to appear, <laughs> hanging off the clock tower. <laughs> OK, future boy! <laughs> Oh, is this the 1950s? Somebody in black and white running past there. <laughs> Good day to you, sir. Welcome to Mildura. <laughs> Whoa! Not bad. Jesus. Oh, see, there's me trying to do some sort of piece to camera, and I got blindsided by a man in a ute. He, uh, oh. Quite excited. Well, I was quite excited because I've uh, I've come to a very the sort of tourist attraction that grabs my attention. A place called Orange World, and uh, as you can see, the couple of uh, couple of citrus next to me. This one though, a little bit uh, slutty for my liking. Uh, <coughs> but this, uh, yeah, they're shut. <laughs> orange World, come and see everything oranges have to offer. Oh, we're closed. What about the oranges? Well done for asking the question. I take it you work in the citrus industry and you thought this is my chance to truly get some free advertising. <laughs> Am I right there? Oh, yes. Yeah, you're yes. <laughs> very much so. What, what do you do for a living? I pick citrus. You pick citrus? <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, oranges, but she turned round to have a look there. <laughs> as, as, as if you were going to see them in the dark. <laughs> Where is this strange citrus picking man? Hmm, <laughs> surely it's all done by machines now. <laughs> He's up the back there in a fedora hat going, No, oh, I'm from the 50s. <laughs> Mechanization has not yet been invented. <laughs> yes, we still pick with our hands. <laughs> For some reason, like a tiny monkey picking. <laughs> picking ticks off somebody. See, you, tourist trackers like this, you don't find them every day. These, these are actually orange stocks. They place people in here who have uh, committed crimes involving oranges or against the oranges. They uh, put them in here and uh, squirt them with uh, citrus juice. It's tricky because it stings your eyes, but at the same time, it's refreshing, you know? Ah, mmm, ah, well, ooh, mmm, ah, mmm, ah. that they allow the farmers to use the sides of the road as their, their stock route. It's a clever idea. Here, let's get every animal we possibly can. Put them in the road. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong there? Right, I'm 415 k's down the road now, and um, I'm in a chuka now. And uh, it was weird because last night I was in Mildura, and when I rode in, it was all 1950s and uh, a bit of a time war. And then now I'm in a chuka, it's all 1850s. Which uh, the further down the road that you go, the uh, it goes back by a hundred years. So if I was to continue, if I wasn't going back up to Griffith, I'd end up. Um, I'd end up doing a gig just to a couple of blokes with big foreheads, just with flints, trying to make rudimentary tools. 
<laughs> Look how relaxed you are, you bunch of relaxed bastards. Look at you in the big cinema seats there. <laughs> it's great. There's not many gigs where you walk out and you can just smell popcorn wafting off the front row <laughs> as you lot just feast away. Look at you. Are you not even holding the popcorn there? He's got it wedged between his knees like that. It's just, like a tiny hamster child filling his big cheeks. <laughs> OK, so uh, it's now, I've just finished the gig and the uh, place is deserted and the uh, cinema's all closed up. Um, but it's not closed up because the guys have, uh, I've talked them into letting me uh, watch a film now. Oh, is that? They're still punning. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> the, uh, thanks for coming now. Safe home. Yeah. <laughs> of course, what's happened there is, is, <laughs> is the fact that I've come around the front. I was in the main auditorium, uh, but I didn't realise that there was other smaller cinemas. And I've just thanked the people for uh, for coming to the show, who have completely blamed me, not realising they were at the pictures. They hadn't come to see me at all. They think that I'm some slightly odd man holding a man's leather satchel, just thanking them, you know. But I am dressed in black, you know, so I could just be... I could be an usher. You, you know, you don't know. Did you hear that? It, it even did a wheel spin. <laughs> Welcome to my oyster domain. Fire the lasers. How you going there, guys? Not too shabby. Let me stop you on for a sec. There you go.